This is for learning aim B2, prevention and management of threats to data. And this is focusing on user access restriction. So the specification says we need to focus on physical security measures, passwords, using correct settings and levels of permitted access, biometrics and two factor authentication. So when we think about physical security measures, we can think of locks as a very good example. An extremely easy way to prevent internal attacks is to physically secure systems to prevent theft. This could mean actually physically locking the machines to the desk. You can also have locked doors and things like the server, firewalls and backups locked in a secure room. There are a couple of benefits to using locks. One is that it stops theft and removal of devices. Another is that the actual electronic locks can record and store personal details to show who has been given entry. Disadvantages is that keys and cards can be lost and this means that anybody could gain entry if they find it. It can be expensive to install a lock on many, many doors. When we consider that we are trying to prevent user access in general, and this section is covering user access restriction. One of the easiest ways to stop people from gaining entry at all is to use a password. Now, passwords are very common and they're very easy to set up and they can easily prevent unauthorized access. However, they do need to be strong and difficult to guess. Otherwise, they don't really serve much purpose. They should always contain a combination of letters, numbers and symbols. Benefits of using a password is that they're simple and free to set up. They can also prevent all access providing the password is strong and difficult to guess. The drawbacks are that people can use weak passwords in your company unless you use some sort of policy. Another drawback is that password crackers are a thing, so if the password is not strong, it could easily be cracked. So the specification says using correct settings and levels of permitted access. Now this is essentially referring to user access levels. Networks allow users to share files. So you need to take care when setting the permissions to make sure that only the correct users can access the correct files. User access levels need to be applied to all files and permissions on systems to ensure that only people can access what they're allowed to. Usually on the network, you would have some sort of administrator that has full access to all files. However, there will be lots of workers that only have access to the files that they are working on. The benefits of using user access levels is that you can have a variety of different rights and permissions applied to your settings. It can also prevent complete access to inexperienced or incompetent users, which will stop them from making any mistakes. The drawbacks are that you need technical staff to set these up. And if you don't do it correctly, some people might have the wrong level of access. Biometrics is a very useful way of preventing user access. Now these usually need to be applied to some sort of doorway or to enter a computer system. And biometrics covers any method where the access is granted based on the parts of their body which are unique. So examples of this are voice, retina, iris, fingerprints and facial recognition. These are supposedly completely unique to every human. The most common ones that are used are things like fingerprints and facial recognition because they are much cheaper to set up than the others. When we are thinking of biometrics, there are a couple of benefits. One is that it's a useful way as an alternative to remembering what people's passwords are. Another way is that it's unique. So there's no way of copying this from anybody else. The drawbacks are they can be very expensive to set up biometric entry onto every device and some of the methods used could be faked. Two-factor authentication 
is a term used to describe any time when there are two different methods used to log into a system. Now, the most common ways that this is carried out is that people will log in using their email or username and password. And once they have logged in, there will be a request sent for additional information. This is usually where it will send a PIN number to your mobile phone or an email to a different address. Sometimes someone might call you to make sure that it is correct information. And on the odd occasion, it could be biometrics that are used. So when we think about the benefits of using two-factor authentication, there is an alternative to remembering lots of different passwords because you could just have a PIN number that's set up or something where you just press that it is you on your mobile phone device. The major benefit is that it adds an additional level of security to your login system. So even if somebody has guessed your password, they would need to have your mobile phone or your other email or the biometric data that belongs to your body. The difficulty with two-factor authentication, the drawback, is that it's expensive to set up and the constant checking and having to put your PIN number in every time you log in might become annoying for the user.